Ripper. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Record Breakers, Psychology of Sales, uh, Festa Palooza was what I de deemed in the email there. Many of you have received. Um, so I was having a chat with uh, Steve last week and he's actually away on holiday with his family in Coffs Harbour. And I was having a chat to Steve and I said, um, do we run Record Breakers? He goes, I reckon absolutely run Record Breakers. Let's just make it an absolute psychology of sales spectacular. And so that is what we're doing this week. Um, as a result, team, please, cameras on. Uh, if you here are at Record Breakers, you'll know the power of building personal brand. Building personal brand starts even in moments like this, where people can actually see your face, see what you're about, be able to connect with you. It's so much easier to connect with a human face rather than a human name. Um, so chuck your cameras on if growing your network is of value to you. Let's put it that way. Uh, good stuff. Cheers, Aaron. Love your work. So team, I've uh, got to dive into Cycle Sales. I'm going to share my screen here. Please let me know that you can see that and then we'll kick it off. But essentially team, we do this every Tuesday, usually myself and my esteemed business partner, Steve Gladen. Uh, he's not with us this week. Um, but we do this every Tuesday, 9.30. And the whole idea of Record Breakers team is to help you hit new records ultimately in your sales walk, in your sales career. As salespeople, it's interesting. We're in a field where growth and consistent growth is so important to everything that we do. And if we're not growing, if we're not expanding, if we're not becoming more, becoming better, ultimately we're starting to go backwards. We often use the metaphor of, an, of a banana. It can only ever be green and growing or it's ripe and rotting. <clears throat> it's rare that it will be doing both at the same time. As salespeople, we're exactly the same. And so ever since the start of COVID, Record Breakers has kicked off, started off as the game plan daily and then has moved on to what has become Record Breakers weekly now every Tuesday, 9.30. So if this is your first time joining us, welcome. Uh, pleasure to have you here. We're going to get stuck in. Team, I want to share with you this week, you know, a couple of these you will have heard before, uh, but essentially I want to share with you three psychological concepts that are going to help you in your sales this week. But ultimately, they're three of the sales psychology concepts that in all of the work that I've done with working with salespeople just like yourselves, business owners just like yourselves, leaders just like yourselves, if we can approach this, this whole psychological game from three particular angles, it really gives us a nice, well-rounded understanding of how psychology is at play in your business or in your sales pipeline or in the work that you're doing with your prospects, okay? To me, personally, and please let me know if I'm talking about myself here, this isn't, this isn't the intention at all. I just want to give you some sort of uh, understanding or perspective of where this is coming from. To me, I've always been fascinated by the brain. I've been fascinated endlessly with why it is that we do what we do and how we say yes to particular things and how we say no to particular other things. Many of you have heard this story, but for me, it all started when I was 10 years old. I walked past a BBC documentary, you know, with that British guy talking about absolutely anything and everything. Well, on this one particular day that I was faking a sickie at school, most likely, uh, that's when you watch these BBC documentaries, walk past the TV. And this guy was talking about the brain and he was talking about how two neurons, brain cells, actually connect and speak with each other and pass messages along to each other. These two brain cells, which I went learned they actually are called neurons, right? Now, what happens is when those two brain cells actually speak with each other, they pass information to each other across this invisible gap here in the middle. That invisible gap is called a synapse. Isn't it? it feels like we're back in high school, doesn't it, team? That invisible gap is called a synapse. Now, all of the information that your brain will ever pass to itself happens in between that little gap where the neurons never actually fully touch each other, but they pass chemically through that gap. What happens inside that gap is responsible for absolutely everything that you are in terms of your personality, your values, your standards, your loves, your hates, your likes, your dislikes, what lights you up, what scares you, your fears, your memories, your everything. Everything that you perceive that you are happens inside that little gap called a synapse. And scientists still, to this day, do not understand fully how it happens. They still don't get it. And I remember walking past that BBC documentary, even as a 10-year-old, I looked at it and in that moment, I fell in love with the brain. Because I thought to myself, this is an area that could be studied for the rest of my life, infinity times over, and we'll never, ever get to the bottom of this. It's a game that can never be won, but can be played forever. And so I was like, what a cool thing to study. Because at the end of the day, team, please, for those of you that do have your camera on, I appreciate it. I have a question for you. 
Um, who here is interested in themselves, in why they do what they do, in what they, how they think the way they think? Who is interested in that? Or am I the only freak in the room with two hands in the air? Right? Most people, most people we speak to will raise their hand to that question and say, yeah, I'm interested in me. I'm interested in my quirks. I'm interested in why I do what I do. I'm interested in what I'm afraid of. I'm interested in what lights me up. I'm interested in me. Yet when you ask people, so please, everyone raise your hand. Who here is super interested in the products of the world and how they're made and engineered? You get some people, around about a quarter of people will raise their hand to that question. But around about 99.99% of people raise their hand to the question, who's interested in themselves and why they do what they do. We're all fascinated by this. Whether you like it or not, you are fascinated by the way that you think, behave and act. Fair call. And so I've made it my life's journey to study why you love that. I'm fascinated by it and I'll never, ever get to the bottom of it. All I get to do is just run record breakers on a half an hour of a Tuesday for it, but it's enough. I get my kick. And so ultimately what I've discovered over working with thousands and thousands and thousands of business owners, salespeople, et cetera, is that there's particular, these particular three concepts that have stood out over and above all other three that allow you to see psychology from the perspective of you, the salesperson, psychology of the, for the perspective of them, the buyer, and then the psychology of the sales conversation itself that'll allow you to have a nice, well-rounded view of some pretty interesting psychological concepts that'll help you close sales today. Thumbs up in the camera. Sound good, team? You guys are leading the charge for everyone. Love it. Good stuff. First one here, psychology of you, team. There is a particular, uh, shall we call it psychological wall that you as a salesperson will continually run into so long as you experience life in sales that involves uh, hitting glass ceilings. Who here has ever had this experience? You're in business or you're in sales and things are ticking along well and you've got momentum and you're cruising along and you feel as though nothing can stop you. Who here has ever had that experience? Like in sales, like I figured it out. I got there. I'm good. I can, I can close sales now. My pipeline's going to be clean forever. I made it. Hey, mom, dad, put that on the fridge. You ever had that experience? And then some, what happens is like a month later, you like you look at your pipeline, it's bone dry. You haven't closed the door in three weeks and you're like, I've stuffed it. I've complete, I'm, what's wrong with me? I've lost my, I can't, close, I can't do anything. I'm never going to be able to get this back again. Who here has had that experience? Yes? Okay, no? Right, great. I've had both. Um, and so ultimately there is a, uh, a function at play here that is super interesting to watch how this actually comes to the fore. But what I've seen in a lot of salespeople around the world, no matter the, uh, no matter the, the uh, background, no matter the country, no matter the industry that they're in, is that salespeople have, uh, have trouble with prioritizing what's important. And by getting your priorities out of whack, everything starts to become stunted. I'll show you how this works. Team. Who here in sales, raise your hand, I'll put two hands in the air. If I had a third and a fourth, I'd chuck them up as well. Who here has ever made money way more important than it needed to be? Who's ever done this? Please don't let me sit here up on stage with two hands in the air like a loner. We've all been there. You're either putting your hand up in the air right now or you're lying. I guarantee it. Every salesperson has done this. You've had that experience where you're like, money, money's the key. If I just have enough money, then it will solve everything else. Count me in for that. And so what we do is we go out and we make sales for the purpose of making money. And then all of a sudden, even though we made money the most important thing, the money starts to dry up. Why? This, this is backwards. Isn't this ironic? This is backwards. Like, hey, money, I made you the most important thing in the world. Why aren't you coming to me? And money sits there looking back at you and says, because I'm not coming to you because I never wanted to be made the most important thing in the world. You decided I should be that. That's not the truth about me. And if you can't see the truth about me, then I don't want to hang around with you. Isn't this interesting? Who here, team, again, raise your hand. Who has made money the most important thing? I'll put two hands in the air. Well done it. Who here has also since realized that money is not the most important thing in the world? Again, I'll put two hands in the air. And when you realized money wasn't the most important thing in the world, what happened to your money? Did it go up or down? It goes up. How cool is that? Isn't that so fascinating? Like the brain order and like money in the way that it interacts with your psychology, it knows that it has a particular order that it needs to be placed in. Fascinating. Yes. 
Okay. So with this, we want to ask a particular question. If you are hitting glass ceilings or you're getting a lot of momentum, but then you just hit this wall and stop and you seem to find yourself going through that cycle a lot, here's what I want you to take, a, uh, take stock of. Many people in sales believe that money is the end goal. I need to make money. I need to close sales because that'll equal money for the company. And that's fine. It will. But ultimately, if we make that the end goal and the purpose is just purely money for money's sake, then it will become stunted and it will cause glass ceilings. What you want to be able to do is ask yourself the question, if we have more money, what are we using it for? Because at the end of the day, team, would you agree money's just simply a tool? I love that classic saying of no one wants to be the richest person in the graveyard. There's no point. You didn't use the money for the tool that it was designed for whilst you were here on earth. Fair call. And so we ask this question. When it comes to money, we often have this belief as salespeople that we need money. Money's what we're after and money's what we need. I have a particular question for you. Many of you have heard this before. Please put it in the chat. Team, what happens to money if we cease to exist tomorrow? If human beings didn't exist tomorrow, what would happen to money? What happens to its value? What can we do with it? What is its point? Just put it in the chat. The value of money if humans cease to exist tomorrow. Please let me know. Got chat flying through. Nothing. Worthless. Irrelevant. Gone. It has no value. Meaningless. Love it. Nice. You guys nailed it in one. Question team. What would happen to human beings if money ceased to exist tomorrow? What would happen to human beings? You said money would be worthless and it would have no meaning and it'd have no purpose. But if money didn't exist tomorrow, what would happen to human beings? What would we do instead? Love it. People said innovate, barter. We would adapt. Great. Good stuff. Find another way. This is it. Find a way to trade. Exchange. This is it. So human beings realize that money is just exchange value, it's not the purpose of the goal. Yet so many of us as salespeople start our day going, okay, got to get money, got to get money, got to get money. And money becomes all clunky and we wonder why. And then you do an exercise like this and you find out why. It's because it was never meant for the thing that you were designing it for. The, the purpose was never money. The purpose was what can money help us do? And so the second that you take stock of this and go, well, okay, if we had money, what would we do with it? And you come up with an incredible answer to that. Well, we would donate it here. We would do charitable work here. We would innovate the business here. We would treat our people better here. We'd be able to help Johnny build his first home. We'd be able, all of it. Then all of a sudden you make that the priority and magically out of nowhere, the money starts to roll again. Because money's looking at you going, yeah, well, now, I'm, now I'll come to you because I'm, I'm gonna, you're going to actually use me for something. I don't want to come to you if I'm just going to sit in your bank account and just sit and dwell and do nothing just to be had. That's not my purpose, bro. My purpose is to be used. I'm a growth tool. And so for salespeople, the second that we realize this and get that in the right order is when the money starts to flow again. And that's the place that we want to be. So question for your team is this, where are your priorities at this week? Where are you getting stuck? And if we look at it through the lens of prioritization, does this help you understand why you're currently stuck and what needs to change as a result? Fair call, thumbs up. Love it. I got like half thumbs. That lets me know that I kind of hit the point, but like, like Greg and Nelson, like they're concerned. They're not getting it. All thumbs up. Okay, I'll go. They, they do have thumbs. Ladies and gentlemen, they have thumbs. All right, I love it. So that's our first one. Psychology of you. Get the priorities right. Okay, next one is the psychology of them. Fascinating stuff here, team, which is this. Um, in the human race, in the year 2022, uh, probably even more so, I mean, not even more so, but I'm sure this has been a part of the human race back since cavemen. I don't know. Who knows? Egocentrism, meaning the focus of the self on the self, meaning literally taking selfie pictures, meaning every, the world revolves around me and I'm the most important thing in the world, is on full display in the year 2022. 
team, who does this anger? Does it, who does this annoy? Do you see this going on in the world? You're like, oh, we have just, we've lost the point. Like we're not taking care of one another. Everyone's just taking selfies, whatever. I was at the, I was at the beach yesterday. I was like doing a bit of typing, like creating like content, just sitting there at the beach. And there was these like, I don't know, they must've been uh, 20 year old girls. They just sat on their phone like this the whole time. They didn't even look at the beach. It did, that was, they weren't, might as well have not been, it was just this the whole time looking at it going, man, we are just missing the point here, aren't we? But I've been there, I've done it, right? Egocentrism is on full display in the world, meaning in both the private world for people and the public world, meaning on LinkedIn, on social media, on people's websites, in through, littered through the internet, is people, whether they're aware of it or not, fully focused on themselves, mainly, and are dropping clues about what lights them up the whole way through. Show you what I mean by this. The key here is to use this to your advantage, not to necessarily get too annoyed by it. As salespeople, there is one person in this world that we should know more than any other, other than ourselves. Who is it? Our, put it in the chat. Our customers, nailed it, Royden, all over it. Customer, says Matthew, nailed it, good. That one person we should know more than anyone else is our customer. Well, I have some good news for you. Your customer is letting you know absolutely everything about them all over the internet if you just dare to look even just one level underneath the surface. If I used to sell for, to Justin from Corporate Chairs, good day, Justin, great to see you, mate. If I used to sell to Justin from Corporate Chairs, I used to have to guess what he was about try and get on a phone call with him when he's a busy decision maker so he doesn't have time for my cold call and then maybe email him to maybe find out after that if we could have a conversation where I could get to learn about it. Maybe. And that would work pretty poorly. Other than that, I'd have to know that Jeremy Bacon knows Justin so that Jeremy could introduce me with a handshake to Justin and then we could actually potentially meet. Okay? Now, in the modern world, I don't have to go through that rigmarole. What I can do instead is realize people's egocentrism is fully on display. Everything I need to know about Justin is probably on the, on the internet somewhere if I'm willing to go take a look. I can go to his LinkedIn. I can go to his Instagram. There's probably some old news articles about him from when he won a cricket premiership when he was 22. It's everywhere. And people don't take it down. And so we can get angry about this or we can look at this and go, this is just an opportunity. I can just go research this person and everything that they are about because people love to tell the world what they're about these days. And so now if I'm wanting to sell to Justin, now I can send him a LinkedIn message going, hey, mate, great to connect. Hey, saw you're a Geelong Cats fan. Killed my swans on the weekend. Heard a lot. Ready for a chat though. It'd be great to catch up. And now it makes sense for him to be able to go, oh yeah, mate, I'm a, sw I'm a, I'm a massive AFL fan. How you doing? And so I can meet him now on that personal level where before I would have had to completely guess and the entire conversation would have been based around business only. Okay. So the key tip here, team, is that access to people and what lights them up is available everywhere. Use it. Don't play guessing games. You're just making it harder for yourself. Use people's egocentrism to your advantage because the information is sitting there anyway. Best places to go are social media. Uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. You'll learn everything you need to know about your next buyer. And that's the psychology of human beings in the, in the year 2022. This is how we operate. If you want to know anything about me, you can go find it pretty easily. You can listen to podcasts. You can go check out LinkedIn, you can, whatever. You'll find it. If I want to learn anything about any of you, I can go start searching it immediately. I just can. I know you're going to be there if I go searching. And I know I can use that to my advantage as a salesperson to connect with you and actually start having conversations about stuff that's actually important to you. Sound good? Thumbs up? Again, we got like uh, half the screen had thumbs. Does it, did everyone lose thumbs in the last 15? Okay, sweet. All right. No one lost a thumb. That's great. Psychology of them. Okay. Third one here, team, is the psychology of sales communication. And so we have psychology of you, psychology of them, psychology of sales communication is this. Uh, team, we as salespeople are being required to play a game that is much bigger 
than any game that was ever acquired to play probably from 15 to 20 years ago backwards. The reason for that is in just the same way that I can find absolutely anything about you on the internet, our buyers can find absolutely anything about our product and our company and even us as well on the internet. Who here has discovered that in the modern buying world, you interact with buyers who are much more educated and knowledge, knowledgeable, educated and knowledgeable than they ever were before. They're, yeah, Charles has two hands in the air. Who's, who's experienced this? You're like, they, they're clicky. They, they've done their research. They know answers to things. Okay, so if the power of a salesperson isn't now in having the knowledge and the answers to things, because they can just Google that in a second, then I'm curious, where does the power lie for salespeople? If the power doesn't lie in knowing the answers, where do you think the power actually may lie now? Knowing the what, do you think? Please put it in the chat if you know what I'm getting at here. And Justin said, LinkedIn has no gatekeepers. That's so true. I love it. So if the power used to lie in knowing the answers, but they can get that in a second now on Google, where does the power now lie for salespeople, do you think? Uh, your silence says it all in the chat team. In asking the questions, Sean nailed it. Good stuff, mate. Hey, Sean, we would should totally do like a whiskey webinar sometime. Um, that's it. The power now lies for salespeople in being able to ask the questions. And we need to be able to ask questions that challenge our buyer's current thinking, challenges the way that they are seeing the perspective through which they're seeing something, or challenges the way in which they were always going to go about something, but now there's a new path that they can take. Please write this down, team. If there is any note you take from today's webinar, please make it this. Your sales growth will correlate with your ability to tell your buyer they're wrong. Your sales growth will correlate with your ability to tell your buyer they are wrong. Now, that doesn't have to sound like this. That doesn't have to sound like, ah, oh, Sean, you're way off, mate. Oh, Mina, you could, not be, you could not be more wrong if you tried. Doesn't have to sound like that. That's not necessarily it. How it can sound is this. Hey, Sean, I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to challenge that. Hey, Mina, two ticks. Actually, honestly, I disagree. It's not how we've seen it. That conversation and that tension is what modern buyers are looking for in an average sales conversation today. If you sit there and agree with them, here's how it sounds. Melv, just give us a thumbs up. Hey, that's a great thumb, man. I love that you give the best thumbs up, bro. And like, it actually works really well against the like background of your jacket. That's a cool jacket, man. Where'd you get the jacket? Just like, was it, was it here in Australia? Just give us a thumbs up if it was in Australia, if you got the jacket. You'd buy, the, of course you got it in Australia. How good's Australia? Australia's a great country and we both live in it. So we got a ton in common. Good stuff, man. Hey, good thumbs. Thanks for playing along. You sound needy, you sound desperate, and no one feels comfortable around you. That is when we take agreement to the nth degree. It doesn't close deals. What you're trying to do is build a relationship of agreement and build a relationship where we get on as buddies. But your buyer doesn't need any more friends. And if they do, chances are it's not going to be you. Sorry, you're just... It's just not the case. It's not what they're here for today. They're here to buy something, not make a new friend. Fair call. And so the more that we realize that, the more we realize that we are here to help our buyer make the right decision, not necessarily make a buying decision. If you allow them and challenge them with the whole intention being, I'm here to help you make the right decision, not necessarily buy from me decision, they will end up buying from you more often than not. But if you try and buy, uh, force a buying decision where they have to buy from you, even though it's not the right one, number one, they won't buy. And number two, they'll spread bad reputation about you all around town. And so they should. You tried to sell something to someone or create a relationship with someone where it wasn't relevant or needed. This is the reality of sales in 2022. It's not about relationships anymore. It doesn't have to be about, hey, we have to get on. What this has to be about now, particularly moving forward, is listen, I'm an expert and I'm an authority in this space and I'm going to pull you up or get you to ask a different question if I think that your line of questioning is going to lead you to make a bad decision. Fair call. What this requires us to do, team, is this. In the year 2022, in a post-pandemic world, 
understanding the psychology of how people think is to take your salesperson's hat off, take your salesperson's cloak off and start having a real conversation with people about the decisions that they're making and teach people how to think rather than what to buy. Teach people how to think rather than what to buy. Because every decision that they make is going to have a pro and a con. No decision they ever make is going to be 100% perfect. And it's up to you to be able to inform them and educate them about those consequences of their choices, whether no matter what they buy. Thumbs up, team. Landing. No more just agreeing with everyone for the sake of agreeing. The more you say no, the more people will come back to you. They want challenge. They want the expertise. They want the authority from you. But if you agree, you don't show any of that. And you're all so well geared in your roles. Like who here is, just give us a wave in the camera. If you've been in your role like three, four, five years, just give us a wave in the camera. If like you're pretty well established, look at those hands. You guys are all experts by now. You know what you're doing. So please feel free to challenge back. Sound good? Love it. Happy with that team? Team, that's our three. So we've got psychology of you. Remember, get things in the right order. Uh, psychology of them. Remember, egocentrism is, the egocentrism is on display. You can find information about your buyer everywhere. Go just the extra level underneath the surface. You'll find it. And then the third is the psychology of communication, which in the year 2022 requires you to be more challenging of your buyers. Push back, say no. You have just as much ability to say no as they do. The more you do say no, the more they'll come back to you because they'll see you as the expert and the authority. Love it, team. Thumbs up. Hey team, just do us a favor. Please put this in the chat. I'm in the middle of um, I'm in the middle of creating something for you. I'm interested to know whether it would be a value. This is pure feedback right here. So whenever we do the six week fast start, just give us a wave in the camera if you've done six week fast start with us at Y Bravo. Yeah, awesome. Um, we always uh, introduce the training and let people know that I'll be doing psychology stuff. Steve's doing strategy stuff. And we always say to people, hey, what are you interested in learning? What excites you about the six weeks ahead? Very often, um, at least probably 30 to 40% of the team will say, I'm really excited for the psychology stuff. I find it interesting. I'm interested in why people do what they do. I'm interested in why I do what I do. I'm interested in this whole influence and persuasion side of the sales conversation and how that interacts psychologically. So what I started to do was I actually put, started to put together like a teachable course purely and strictly fully surrounding the psychology of sales. People are keen on it for two reasons. Number one, it's super entertaining. Who found today at least a little bit entertaining where you're like, oh, I totally get that. Entertaining often is linked with psychology. That's why it's so fun. Second thing that comes up is people go, it actually gives me an edge because it's actually quite effective um, in if I know this about my buyers, but my competitors don't see my, my buyers this way, it just gives me an immediate edge that I can't get anywhere else. They can have an edge on a product or anything like this, but if I understand the buyer deeper than them, I'm already in front. Makes sense. Just gives a thumbs up if that resonates. Final thumbs up. For, yeah, great. So I wanted to put together a course for you, a teachable course on the psychology of sales specifically, like four modules on the psychology of you, psychology of them, psychology of communication. And then the fourth module I've actually put into it is the psychology of copywriting. Who's interested in writing more persuasive emails and getting more conversion out of your emails and things like that? Awesome. So if, can you just put a yes in the chat? This is purely feedback, guys. And if it's a no, even write a no, like I'm totally okay with that. Just put in the chat, if I created a teachable course around this, would you guys be interested in it? We do it for peanuts. We do it for like a, I don't know, like a $19 a month teachable subscription. We'll just keep adding psychology of sales videos for you guys to keep digging into if you'd be interested. Just put in the, if, it's, if I get a ton of yeses, I'll create it. If I get a ton of no's, I just won't. I'll save my time and put it into something else, but let me know. Chat's flying through. Got lots of yeses. That's awesome. All right. Tell you what I'll do, team. I will actually create, I'll create the first module or even the second module of videos that the, the course is planned out. I'll create the first module of videos, get that out there and get that out to you as soon as possible. Um, and then I'll keep adding the next module of videos as I go. And I'll try and stay ahead of you watching them. So you never, so you never actually left in the lurch. That'll be good. Thank you so much for your feedback, guys. That's awesome. All right. Awesome. Okay, guys, I'll leave you to it. I'll go, I'm going to get started creating that course straight away for you. Um, thank you so much for your feedback. I really appreciate it. Thank you for a cracking psychology of sales session. 
Um, for those of you who are in the locker room, we're now jumping over to a different uh, webinar link. So for those of you in the outbound game that want to jump into the, the locker room this week, see you over there. Uh, love your work. Cracking session, team. Thank you so much for joining us, as always. We'll see you back next week for normal viewing of Record Breakers. Cheers. Love your work.